Thank you, Musharraf. So uh, good morning. I'm Hao Yuan Li. People also call me Chui. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about the open source status of the Taekyung project and uh, give you an introduction to Taekyung, basically for whoever haven't heard of, heard of it before. And it's basically what Taekyung is, was like before this year. And then talk about the deployments of Taekyung in production and some new features we have in Taekyung and talk about how to get involved. So here's the background. So we started Taekyung uh, from Amplab UC Berkeley uh, in the summer of 2012. And uh, the project got open sourced on the following year, in the following year, in April 2013. Now it's like uh, two and a half years ago. It's open sourced under Apache 2.0 license. And the latest release is uh, version 0.8.2 in, in this month. And uh, the, the, the project has been deployed at more than 100 companies. So Taekyung now is one of the fast, fastest growing big data open source project. Just to, there are many metrics, just to illustrate just one of the metrics. So this, in terms of the contributor growth, so we had one contributor at the beginning for our version 0.1, and we had a 300% increase, and, uh, which is three contributors for 0.2, and then 15 contributors, 30, uh, 30 contributors, 46, uh, 70, and uh, 111 for 0.7 uh, release. And uh, in the latest release, we have more than 170 contributors. Uh, compared with uh, uh, <clears throat> compared with Amcam last year, so we have more than three times increase in, term, in terms of the number of contributors, and we have more than 50 organizations are contributing to the project as well. So I want to use this opportunity to thanks to our contributors as well as users. This is the snapshot of the that link, which is our community link in our website. This is this graph is auto generated from the GitHub like a number of commits. So you, the more the commits you do, the more bubble you have in this graph. Uh, and uh, I want I want to thanks to these companies who are use, either using or or contributing to the project as well, like Yahoo, Intel, IBM, these companies. And uh, just to uh, just one uh, one example of production deployment, uh, Baidu uh, is uh, is deploying Taekyung in production. They run Spark SQL on top of Taekyung, and uh, under under Taekyung they run Baidu internal Baidu file system, and they use Taekyung tier storage concept uh, feature to manage both memory and HDD. And the deployment actually nowadays is around 200 nodes, and uh, it's managing uh, PBs of space. Uh, under Taekyung under Taekyung management, uh, and uh, it brings like uh, 30 times performance improvement for Baidu's workload. So that's just uh, the open source background. So then I'm going to introduce, uh, give intro brief introduction to Taekyung, the status before 2012. So Taekyung is an open source, memory centric distributed storage system. So then the people ask, why do you want to do this new storage system called Taekyung? So here's the reason. So there are two reasons mainly. So why is a performance reason <clears throat> for memory is fast and DRAM throughput still increase exponentially every year. On the other side, disk throughput increase slowly. So then we have the result that memory locality is the key to achieve interactive response time. That's the performance side. And then let's look at the price trend. So memory is getting cheaper and cheaper. So the price, DRAM price decreased around 50% every 18 months. So as you can see from this figure, at the early 2000s, companies from Wall Street, they started to embrace memory technology aggressively. And then after that, the company like Google, like Baidu, they started to embrace that as well. And now the rest of us in the world start to embrace it like, uh, uh, aggressively. So this trend has been realized by other people as well. Like we have Apache Spark from our lab. We, uh, you have a HANA in memory database and others as well. <clears throat> then the question is, is the problem, is the problem solved? So the answer is, uh, is no, otherwise I wouldn't be talking here. So we're still missing a solution for the storage layer. And uh, let's, let's show if we have a solution in the storage layer, what new things or what type of uh, issues we can address. It's just a, a small example we, can sh we show like uh, before, tw before the, this year. So this is one example showcased with Spark. And uh, you know what Spark, based on the George talk, it has been widely deployed in many companies. And you know how it works. So I'm not going to spend time here. But there are still issues not covered by Spark. Say so it's a computation engine. So it means that in, in many companies, when you have the, your complex data processing pipeline, you have to do the data sharing between different Spark jobs or even jobs with, uh, with other frameworks as well. So 
so in this particular case, you, when you do this state sharing, you have to go through an external like story system. Say, for example, on the left side, you have a Spark job one, write something into either HDFS or Amazon S3 if you deploy in cloud. And then on the right side, you will have another Spark job or loads the data back. And this state sharing process is slow. And as I mentioned, you could have your legacy code like written in MapReduce, but you still want to use it. You have a lot of investment there, even though you want to write a new code in Spark. So that's how to share this data efficiently. And the solution with Tachyon is very simple. So basically, we just run Tachyon in the middle between like computation frameworks and storage, and, like traditional persistent storage, like Amazon S3, like HDFS. In this case, these frameworks just interact with Tachyon to get a very fast memory performance uh, throughput. That's the first, first showcase. The second case is, in Spark or in memory computation engine, like the way they, they store the data now, in memory data nowadays, is they keep the data in, in same JVL, the same process as the compute engine. This means that if the, if the computation, if the compute engine crashes, you also lose the data in the, uh, in the same process storage engine, and you will either recompute the data or reload the data back from outside storage, which could, which could be time consuming. So that's a, that's a second uh, showcase. So in this case, how we deal with it is still very simple. You just run Tachyon in the middle, and then you will see you keep all the data, in memory data in Tachyon safe, even when the job crashes. And in this case, uh, you, can, you can steal other jobs or this job, you can still load the data from Tachyon space uh, as a memory speed. That's the second one. And the third one is, Let's talk about data sharing. Uh, data like sharing um, for, the, for the different jobs uh, for, the, for the processing part. So, so uh, assume there, think of a very simple example. You have two Spark applications, Spark jobs, and they want to process the same, same input data. And the way you do it uh, today is that you load the data, the same data, into two different Spark applications. Right? So in this case, you will have an in-memory data duplication issue. That's the first one. And the second one is a garbage collection because it runs on the JVM. So that's the third issue. And the, the, the solution is still very simple. You just keep the in-memory data in Tachyon. And in this case, you only need to keep one single copy of the data in Tachyon. And all the different jobs, they can process and read this data through ta from Tachyon as, as a memory speed, and you, you don't have the in-memory data duplication issue. And because you load the data from, from Tycoon's memory as the off-heap storage, and uh, in, in this case, you, you have much less garbage collection issue as well. So, so to enable <clears throat> what we just mentioned, so there are two features we talked before, but this is, I'm going to briefly mention this today. The one feature is the memory-centric architecture, the other feature is we push lineage down to the storage layer. So for the first feature, so this is the architecture uh, of Tachyon. We have the single logical master, which keeps tracking the location of the data, as well as the status of every worker node. And then we have the workflow manager to, keep, to manage lineage information. And then on top of uh, in every worker node, we also run a worker daemon, which manages a local space, the tier space, as well as reporting status to the master node and the response remote I.O. request. And uh, every worker node will also run a uh, RAM disk, which keeps the real in-memory data. And uh, when you have a Tycoon client, when you have the locality, it will access the RAM disk directly without going through the worker daemon to guarantee the memory performance. And of course, we have the master fault tolerance. And you can use a, a, we, we use a Zookeeper to do leader election in this case. That's the uh, architecture. And the lineage concept uh, in Tachyon is also very simple. So you have, it basically describes the relationship among uh, different files or data. So in this particular example, as you can see, you have a Spark job reads uh, a, a file set A and generate a file set B. And if you have another Spark job reads file set C and generate file set D. And later on, you have a MapReduce job reads B and D and generate E. And Tachyon remember this information reliably. This means that when these jobs write data into Tachyon, you only, this job only need to write one single copy of data into Tachyon's memory at the memory speed. 
and Tekken will guarantee the fault tolerance. If in any case, like say, uh, faults that E get lost, Tekken will be able to, uh, to launch necessary recomputation to get, uh, to get the data back. That's the lineage concept in Tekken. And uh, that's, that's a very brief introduction or summary of what happened before 2012. And then let's talk about the new deployments and new features we, we had during the past year. So the first of all, the, this figure we want to show is, is I want to emphasize where Tekken sits in the, in the stack, what it really enables. So Tekken sits in the middle of the computation engine and the storage, persistent storage systems. This means that it enables new workloads in any storage system. I'm, I'm going to talk about some real use cases later on as well. And uh, this means that they bridge new workloads as well as improve the performance to the under layer. And to the upper layer, it will bridge new data as well. Say, previously, you only can access data in this particular cluster. And now you can also process the data in your remote cluster as well at a very, uh, at a very good performance. And uh, of course, at this new layer, we can easily like, innovate on the API to make data access, store, or manage much easier as well. So, and the second thing is I want to talk about the, the Tekken running in the production environment, both in the cloud and on prem premise as well. So this is one case I already talked about, the Baidu case, and I'm going to talk more about this anymore, but this is another use case. This is a leading oil company. They run Spark on top of Tekken, and they run Tekken on top of Gluster file system. And in a lot of uh, scientific computing, they, they, do, uh, they use Gluster file system. And they use Tekken to manage memory only. And in this case, they bridge the data, bridge the new workloads between the traditional data, and they can analyze the data in the traditional storage. That's, uh, that's one use case. And the other use case, this is a SaaS company. And they run uh, Impala on top of Tekken, and they use Tekken to load the data from S3, Amazon S3, and use Tekken to manage both memory and SSD, and they, they have uh, around 15 times performance improvement. And uh, the next one, is a uh, biotechnology company. They run both Spark and MapReduce on, pop, on top of Tekken. They also use cluster file system and use Tekken to manage uh, local memory and SSD. And uh, is another one, it's a SaaS company. They use uh, Spark on top of Tekken, uh, Tekken on top of S3, and uh, they use Tekken to manage uh, SSD only. And this is a leading retail company uh, as well. Uh, this is a leading retail company. They use, uh, Tekken on top, they use Spark and MapReduce on top of Tekken, Tekken on top of HDFS, and uh, they use Tekken to manage, to manage the memory. And from these examples, from these examples, you can see, what you can see that Tekken, run, Tekken runs everywhere, and it's really like run on top of any like different persistent storage, and you can run different frameworks, <coughs> share the data among different frameworks through Tekken. And uh, as Yang mentioned uh, in an earlier talk, like as this being this innovative layer here, and we enable like faster innovation in the storage layer. So I'm going to use some features in the following slides to showcase, uh, to demo this. <coughs> so one common question we, we got like before is that like people say, uh, you know, like even though memory performance is going, still going up and the price is going down, but still memory expensive. Compare, if you compare it to SSD like, uh, or like HDD. So then the question is, what if the data size exceeds a memory capacity? So then we introduced a, a tiered storage concept in, feature in Taikia. Basically, you can have any number of tiers managed by Taikia space. And uh, as you can see, memory, SSD, HDD, or even like NVRAM or whatever like new storage media you may came out. Uh, like the new announcement from Intel and other companies. And uh, in this case, you can configure Tachyon to manage, like you say, I want to manage memory only. I want to manage SSD only. I want to manage like memory plus HDD. And this all depends on your own cost analysis and how important the, like, the, the latency or the performance is to your workloads in your, uh, in your production. That's the tier storage concept. Even though we introduced this feature only this year, and now we are seeing this feature is running in uh, different companies like production. Like I mentioned, Baidu, they are running petabyte, they are using Taikia to manage petabyte of space, which is uh, pretty exciting. And uh, the other feature on top of this is, 
like people say, okay, you have this tier storage, so I want to, I have a lot of, I'll have a lot of data. Some data I think are more important than other data, and I want to keep the most, like, hottest data, like, in your most, like, uh, perf like, highest performance tier. And in this case, we have different, like, policies you can choose to say how to do the data eviction from upper layer to lower layer, or you, how you can promote your data from the lower layer to the upper layer. And beyond that, which is more interesting is, we, we, we realize that in many different companies, if you have the resource and if this workload is super critical to you, you may want to investigate yourself, like what's the best policy for you? So we also have the interface and you can like implement your own like policy to do this uh, allocation and the eviction. That's the uh, pluggable data management. Uh, and of, of, of course, like you said, you have some data super important and you want, just want to pin this data in the memory space, you can have the pin operation in Tachia and you can unpin it later as well. So that's, that's one, like, one important feature I just talked about, which is tier storage. And another very cool feature or very interesting feature is the transparent naming. So what does this mean? So previously, before, uh, before this feature, what happened if you deploy Tachia is that if you write data into Tachia, Tachia will put the data into the under persistent storage, right? So when you do this, in the under persistent storage, your naming, the file naming, is, is, a, is, a, is some format only understood by Tachia. This means that for all your application, you have to go through Tachia at the same time. So for some company, this is doable, but for some other company, this takes a long time. So what, we can, what this enable is that, so nowadays, if in this, in this case, you say, like, you want to you wanna configure the under storage is HDFS. In Tycoon space, you have data folder, you have user folder, and in the under storage, Tycoon will create the same uh, hierarchy for the folders and uh, the same file name as well. What this enable is that, first of all, it is much easier for users to deploy Tycoon in production. Because even say Tycoon fails, like you still can access data in your way. But like even though we don't, you know, we, we don't think it fails like uh, in production. <laughs> but anyway, so, so, and the other thing it enab really enables is that after writing the data through Tycoon, you have part of your applications talking through Tycoon interface. And your other part of applications, your legacy applications, you can still like communicate with your persistent storage like at the same time, so in your production environment. This is really powerful. You can migrate your workload step by step. And uh, for some legacy workloads, you, you can just choose say, I will never migrate those workloads. I don't care. So that's what this feature enables. So, and after this feature, what's even more interesting is that we have a, 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 a new feature called unified namespace. Uh, what does this mean? So, so from the stack figure you see, Below Tachyon, you can run all type of uh, a persistent storage. And our users say, okay, I, I have this i3, I have HDFS in my, in my own cluster. I, may, I have cluster file system, this and that. And whether I want to access data, all, the, 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 all those data at the same time, but I don't want to like manually like uh, ETL, like transfer the data from, migrate data from one cluster to another, which is painful. So, so then with this feature, basically, what we can do is we, you can mount and unmount a particular uh, persistent storage under a particular uh, Tycoon folder. And this means that your application, you only need to talk to Tycoon namespace, and it will, it, Tycoon namespace and Tycoon system will help you to access data in different under, under, persistent, under storage system, like transparently for you. So which is very easy to use and very easy to manage data for you. And, uh, and it's also very fun as well. So and after that, we have many more features. And due to the uh, time uh, limitation, I'm not going to talk about like, them in detail. Uh, just, uh, this is some, uh, I'm just uh, going to elaborate some of those. One thing is we have remote write support. So previously, we require you have a Tycoon worker daemon running on the node, which you have a Tycoon, uh, you have a Tycoon writer. Now it's not required anymore. You can write to remote Tycoon memory. And you, we have easy deployment. 
So previously, you can only do standalone deployment. Now you can deploy Tachyon on top of Mesos, on top of Yarn, and it's very easy, just one command. And uh, we have an uh, initial like, security support as well. As more and more people are using us, this is a very demanding feature. And uh, uh, we have one, one command, cluster deployment, and this is, very, this is very cool for developers as well. You can deploy a local Tycoon cluster on your laptop, on your laptop, just using one command, or on, uh, on AWS using one command. It's very, it's very easy and fun to use as well. And, uh, and since people are using this uh, in production, they want to see, they want to integrate Tycoon with their uh, monitoring system, and we have monitoring support, we have metric support for client, worker, and the master, et cetera. <clears throat> and beyond these features, like, oops, beyond these features, we have more under storage supports as well. Like, you can see, you can see this. Some of these are still under development, and uh, we, are getting, we are getting help from uh, uh, many different companies in the industry. And if you want to plug in or uh, integrate your storage system with Tachyon, uh, please uh, uh, talk to us. Um, it's, it'd be very, that'd be very cool. And uh, some like reported tagging use case in Fedora channel, in Fedora distribution, uh, default uh, of heap storage for Spark, exchange data between different computation engines, and people use it in, uh, in their own uh, product offering. And EMC and uh, Pivotal, they say this is tagging will play a critical role in the future data lake architecture. And you have like IBM is contributing to Tachyon, writing blogs about it. And this is one more thing is that, as Yang mentioned, we also have the company uh, backing this uh, uh, project nowadays. And to guarantee the quality of the project and the fast growing of the project and a lot of more features were organized into a project as well. And uh, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, cre uh, it's, it's created by the top cre uh, creators and the top contributors of the project. And we, have a, uh, we are backed by uh, Andreessen and Horowitz. And we are committed to this open source software as well, and that's our uh, company link. And uh, in, the, in the end, I'm talking about how to uh, get involved. It's very simple. So uh, this is uh, the stack figure, as you can see. And uh, you are welcome to try, uh, try the project. You're welcome to contact us, and uh, we welcome any collaboration as well. And uh, you, you can also just go into the open source community, which is a very friendly environment, and we have new people coming every day. And, uh, and beyond that, there's some more links, like uh, for, you, for your reference, uh, you can go to, uh, you, you can try. And what worth mentioning is that we also have our meetup group. And our last meetup, we have more than 300 people uh, talk about, like, last meetup is uh, Baidu's uh, contribution to Tachyon, uh, like uh, Adato, uh, their deep learning framework, uh, doing deep learning on top of Tachyon and some new features from us as well. Uh, and you are welcome to check it out. Um, that's pretty much it. And uh, I'm happy to take any question. Thank you, guys. Okay, so the question is, the question is now HDFS uh, allow people to put data in memory as well, and uh, if the workload is a, uh, only Spark plus HDFS, whether you need to uh, use, whether it's beneficial to use tagging or not. And uh, I think the, the, the answer is still uh, yes. So, and here's the reason. So, there are, there are several reasons. One reason is, like, Tekken is future proven. It means that, like, now you use HDFS, and like tomorrow you may use other storage as well. You may use S3. You may have hypercloud as well. So in that case, if you use Tekken, if you program against Tekken, it's fine. And no matter what storage you use in the future, it's still okay. And you don't need to do any additional work for that. That's one thing. The other thing is. Um, we, we take memory, we are memory-centric storage, and uh, we take memory, like, we, we tune our system, and we develop our API, like, particularly focusing on the memory performance. And then pro from performance side, I think we are, like, 
we are pretty good. And, the, and even beyond that, as you can see, the features I mentioned earlier, all those policies, this and that, that's really easy to, uh, for the upper layer as well. And we have a pretty good integration with, with Spark as well. Even though there are, there, we still have a lot of room to improve, but for example, like uh, off heap like storage, we are the default off heap storage for Spark. Uh, that's, I think that's uh, the thing, like, if I were you, that I would consider the benefit of you, some of the benefits, like you add Tekken into the stack. But in this case, even you add Tekken into the stack, you don't need to, we still, like, we still use HDFS in your particular case as the persistent storage, and I think they will work fine, yeah. Thanks. Any, uh, any more? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so the question is, uh, do we have any benchmark <coughs> of uh, like using Taekyeon like with Spark or compare with other system, this and that as well? So, um, I think along with the development, there are some uh, benchmark posted by uh, developers here and there. But I think what's even more interesting is uh, there's, uh, uh, the blog post or talks given by companies which are using Taekyeon in production. Say one example I would mention, I, I mentioned here is the Baidu use case, like uh, they use Taekyeon. So previously, I think they, they pre also presented in the uh, Spark Summit early this year. So previously they use uh, MapReduce only, and uh, the performance for a, uh, for a query, it took like uh, 1200 seconds. And then they migrated the system to use Spark SQL, and that took uh, 300, 300 seconds. So which, like immediately you got four times performance improvement in this case. And then they add the Taekyeon into this picture and they got, uh, they further decrease the performance to be 10 seconds, which is another 30 times performance improvement. So I think these are like more important than, than, uh, than some um, vendor benchmarks, yeah. But I, I would also say like it's also sometimes case by case. If you have some particular use case, you are not sure, you're welcome to uh, contact us as well. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm wondering how Tachyon plays together with Tungsten. That does in-memory um, direct allocation? Let me repeat the question. So you're asking how, what's the relationship between Tachyon and Tungsten? Is that your question? Great. So uh, we got this question sometimes. So uh, it's, 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 it's very different. It's very different. So from my understanding, Tungsten is a uh, uh, single GVM memory optimization uh, solution, technique. And you can, like, like other, um, instead of managing the memory by JVM, by the JMM garbage collector, you allocate your own memory pool instead of JVM. You say, I want to manage by, by myself. And then you do like, some fine-grained management of memory. You don't need to JVM, you don't need JVM to do garbage collection. That's, that's Tungsten. And, but the thing it doesn't address is, um, it's, it's a single spark performance acceleration. But what Tachyon does is data sharing and the management and the access. It's at a different layer, at a different layer, and address totally different problem. So, so in that case, I think it's great to have both technology there. Does it address your question? Yeah, great. More? Yeah, I think everyone is happy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I will be around, so after the talk. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs>